Diehard Dragon Ball Z fans finally have a game to feel good about. It might stumble a bit along the way with some odd design choices and rough edges, but Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2's mix of fan service, fast-paced arena brawling, and long-term questing and progression scratch a long-standing itch for series fans. The unique and ambitious concept of the Xenoverse series really sets it apart from the rank and file of licensed anime games. It's a three-dimensional arena brawler seated within an MMO-like structure, which provides both the immediate fun of DBZ's big battles and a broader experience of being a new Dragon Ball character that inhabits the same universe and grows gradually in power over time, just like the franchise's greatest heroes. Combat is at the heart of the experience, and Xenoverse 2 generally does a good job of translating the omnidirectional, all-over-the-place scraps of the show. Basic chain combos can just be mashed out haphazardly, but these alone will not grant you victory. Building real combos requires a sound understanding of various cancel mechanics and different resource meters. None of it is any more difficult than pressing a couple of buttons at the same time, but where it didn't necessarily test my fighting game dexterity, it did reward me for experimenting with its huge cache of special abilities, which offer a wide range of tactical options. From space controlling abilities that help you zone out aggressive opponents, to attacks that trade away damage for the chance to inflict debilitating status effects, there are enough interesting tools to support almost any playstyle, as well as ample opportunity for counterplay. Some of my enthusiasm was dampened a bit by the wet mop hit effects, and by the camera's sometimes unruly behavior when it warps around to keep up with the action. That can lead to some frustrating missed attacks, sometimes at the worst possible moment. But on the whole, it captures the spectacle of DBZ bouts while keeping things manageable. <laughs> Though the story won't exactly set the world on fire, it does manage to serve as a plausible excuse to send you on a trip through DBZ history and a side story that could conceivably fit into the series' established lore. Two new antagonists and their masked lapdog are sowing chaos throughout the Dragon Ball Z timeline, changing key moments that fans will remember well. Stepping in to write them means fighting some of the show's most iconic battles, which even as someone with a less than complete knowledge of Dragon Ball was a fun way to get an anime history lesson. The story hints at some heavier themes, with Trunks in particular struggling with the opportunity to change some painful events from his past, but most of it is lightheartedly played for laughs, which feels just a little bit hokey at times. Still, flying around the sizable hub city, being randomly challenged by legendary DBZ characters, and slowly building my fledgling time patroller into an over 9,000 beast really immersed me in the world. Especially in online mode, Xenoverse 2 is essentially an MMO light, with other player characters flying around looking for party members to quest with and opponents to duel in a constant pursuit of more power, which will go on well after the 30 to 40 hour campaign is over. While it does an admirable job of providing the necessary activities and services that make an MMO experience work, Xenoverse 2 also commits a variety of small but irritating faux pas. For example, there's no quest journal to track current side quests, so sometimes I ended up manually walking back to quest givers just to have them reiterate what they needed me to do. There's a general map that shows me where I can find new quest givers, but the fast travel map doesn't have them marked so you need to memorize the locations before opening the fast travel menu and then picking the closest point. None of this is a terribly huge deal on its own, but there are enough design oversights like this to cause irritation that could have been easily avoided. Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2's ambition is admirable, and though it's riddled with a lot of silly little inconveniences, it mostly succeeds in giving DBZ fans an authentic feeling world to dive into for the long haul. Though no individual element of its role-playing or brawling gameplay is overly deep, taken as a whole, there's a surprising amount to consider while progressing your character, and enough to do to keep it from getting stale too soon. For more on Dragon Ball Z, stay right here at IGN.
Game Ranks presents another episode of Before You Buy, the show where we give you some straight-up gameplay and some first impressions of the latest games releasing. As usual, I'm Jake Baldino, and I'm really tired. I've been playing so many games, but it's the busy season, and we got another one, Dragon Ball's Universe 2, coming off pretty hot off the heels after the first game. I'm surprised we're getting another release of another Xenoverse this quickly. Also, sorry we never got around to covering the first game. I definitely saw all of your comments and tweets, so we made sure to cover Xenoverse 2 upon release. We had to. I'm definitely a little bit mixed on this one, and I'll explain why, but let's Let's talk about the basic premise. What's really going on here is that it's very similar to the first game in terms of setup, but it's now later on in the future, and Toki Toki City has now become Kanton City. It's a much bigger hub world, and you create your own character and you enter the world of Dragon Ball, and it's up to you to join the Time Patrol Force and basically police the Dragon Ball timeline and correct any inconsistencies within it. Like the first game, I do think this is a clever way to kind of give a setup to creating your own character and injecting you into the world of Dragon Ball Z and allowing you to play on things that happened and also kind of just enjoy some what if scenarios to kind of shake things up. Like the last game, Dragon Ball's Universe 2 definitely succeeds in that case. Here when you start out, you create a new character once again, and character creation still leaves a lot to be desired. It's a little bit more fleshed out than last time, but it's still just not really enough, at least for me personally. I do like all the different choices and types of heroes you can make, but it's also kind of a shame that you can't just import your character from the last game, but they explain why. It's a different game, and you can actually upload your save from the previous game, but without spoiling anything, it's pretty superficial, and it doesn't really do anything or add anything to the game. Don't expect any wildly new and crazy things for Dragon Ball's Universe 2, but expect some nice improvements and tweaks with things and problems that the first game had, but also be warn that the issues that the first game had probably mostly roll over to the second for most people. Well, with this game, I do kind of question the whole setup of the hub world scenario and everything within it. Also, yes, I named my character Sil Bill. That was really stupid, but whatever, deal with it. It is worth noting that this time around, there are no load times. It is one big open hub world with little different areas to explore, lots of things to do, and they're not broken up by loading screens, and I really, really appreciate that. You can get around very quickly through flying or operating vehicles that you can unlock and purchase. But I gotta say, the hub world music, for some reason, really got to me. It is so grating and annoying. Greetings. <laughs> But at least the hub world has enough going on. There's lots of people to talk to, there's characters from the Dragon Ball universe that you can train with, there's items to find and fighting abilities. There's shops on shops on shops for all different things like clothing, accessories, and potions. There's tons of tons of characters to talk to, and then there's leaderboards you can check, and also you can sign up and go on multiplayer missions with other people. And I think that's a really big improvement because now there are more parallel quests, and that's awesome. But like I said, me personally, I can do without the hub world. I don't really need all that. I just kind of want to play the meat and potatoes of the game. And that's where Dragon Ball's universe Universe 2 is, is definitely the best. The combat here is really damn solid, it's fast, it's fun, it's varied, and I like it a lot. It is definitely not perfect, most notably the camera can sometimes be really awesome and really change angles when you're fighting to make it cinematic, but then also it can be really distracting when it gets stuck on environments very often when you're in close quarters. Things get really janky here and there. Also, both enemy and cooperative AI is not very good. They're usually embarrassing, and a lot of your co-op buddies that are being run by the computer often die very quickly. But I really do like the way Xenoverse 2 amps up to difficulty and it's really up to you to go back to the hub world and do different things and train harder to go back into the time patrol mode and progress through the main missions, but you're only going to be able to do that if you do take the time to get better. And honestly, the more fighting in these games that I can do, the better, because I do like the fighting system. There's heavy and light attacks, you can hold the triggers to activate special attacks, there's long range key blasts, and the ability to just freely run, fly, and jump around the environment at high speeds is just straight up good. Not to mention the fact that I think this game looks pretty damn good. It looks like a Dragon Ball cartoon. The style looks like the anime, and cutscenes are recreated with love, and you can totally tell that. This game does exist simply out of a love for Dragon Ball, and that's honestly where it's the best. I think fans are going to find a lot to love here. If you wanted more Dragon Ball Xenoverse, you got it with Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2.
if you're not the biggest fan, of I would say this isn't an immediate must buy for you. I think you should look into it a little more and see if it's really up your alley because it is by no means a perfect game, but there is a lot of fun to be had. When you're flying around with your friends or the computer fighting Vegeta or fighting Frieza or whoever at high speeds, it just feels fun, responsive, and good. If you don't level up though, sometimes missions can just feel a little bit more of a grind. It takes a while to whittle down some of the boss enemies' health. And that can be lame, coupled with the hub world, which I just think isn't really just my cup of tea. I think there is a good balance of pros and cons for Xenoverse 2. And as much as I have some criticisms for this fairly decent game, I do want to reiterate that Dragon Ball Z fans are going to have a lot of fun here. So guys, that's Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. A pretty simple game to talk about, at least on my end. But like I said, there are a fair amount of pros and cons. And of course, I've thrown in my personal opinion. So I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. If you have been playing Xenoverse 2, are you into it? If you're a diehard Dragon Ball fan, are you feeling it? Or if you're just kind of a casual fan who hopped in, is it enough for you? And do you like... Dragon Ball Xenoverse released back in February of 2015. Critical reception was middling at best, with Destructoid claiming, Dragon Ball Xenoverse has some of the worst design decisions ever embedded into a video game. In spite of these choices, such as egregious random elements, poor hub world, and jarring difficulty spikes, many fans simply appreciated the ability to create their own character and explore a fresh take on the Dragon Ball franchise. Due to this, Xenoverse went on to sell over 3 million copies worldwide, making it the best-selling Dragon Ball game in history. And now, after a few network tests and an appeal to fans for feedback, Xenoverse 2 has released. And the question on everyone's mind is this. Will this game bring the series to the next level? Before we get into the review proper, I want to acknowledge any bias I and the rest of the team may have towards this game. First off, we have been fans of Dragon Ball for a vast majority of our lives at this point. Second, we are good friends with many people who worked on this game and Funimation's dub itself. Lastly, Takahata 101, Kaiser Neko, and myself are actually in this game as custom voice options. Subsequently, if you do decide to pick up this game, you can play as us by choosing male voices 8, 13, and 15 respectively. With that out of the way, let's talk about what Xenoverse 2 has to offer. For the uninitiated, Dragon Ball Xenoverse allows you to play as your own customized character. You start by choosing your race. Human, Saiyan, Namekian, Majin, or Frieza race. Two original villains, Toa and Mira from Dragon Ball Online, are wreaking havoc throughout time, and it's your job as a time patroller to protect the Dragon Ball timeline and make sure events happen as they should. This often involves cleaning up little twists, such as Cooler showing up to help out his brother Frieza on Namek. If you've played the what-if scenarios of Dimps' other Dragon Ball games, then you're probably familiar with the concept. However, it's between the story missions where you truly see the improvements in Xenoverse 2, and what the game truly has to offer. First and foremost, the Parallel Quest system has finally been fixed. Parallel Quests, or PQs for short, are the game's primary source of techniques, equipable items, and other loot. Now, in order to get the best loot, you need to complete each PQ with an ultimate finish, meaning you need to complete extra objectives and the primary victory to get a chance at the best rocks. See, back in Xenoverse 1, sometimes, even if you've completed all of the extra objectives, the ultimate finish might not proc, meaning you had even less chance of getting the items that you wanted. I don't know why this wasn't patched or if it was intentional from the outset, but hey, in Xenoverse 2, it's fixed. Also improved in the sequel is the Mentor System, wherein you can find some of your favorite Dragon Ball characters, as well as Raditz and Yamcha, scattered around the now redesigned hub world, all awaiting to teach you some of their iconic moves. Unlike the first Xenoverse game, once they spawn in their locations, that is where they stay. No longer will you need to reload the hub world constantly, hoping that the one mentor you want randomly spawns. God. Damn it, where are you, Cell? Xenoverse 2 also expedites the time between your mentor's lessons. Now to progress to the next lesson, you only need to play through the story and complete an advancement quest, which is normally a gauntlet fight between five of your characters and your mentors. The combat system has been cleaned up as well. The biggest and most obvious change is now every race has a transformation skill. Saiyans can go Super Saiyan 1, 2, 3. Freeza's race turns golden. Mechians can grow to the size of an Ozaru. Humans hop aboard the flying Nimbus and gain access to the power board. And Majins turn into a palette swap issue. They apparently have the, quote, best move in the game, but I think the Majins kind of got the shit. Each of these transformations comes with a new special mechanics, and while I'm not entirely sure it's balanced, 
it at least means that if you choose a race other than Saiyan, you have something fun you can do. Come on. The combo system is also there. Some of you may remember from our Universe 1 playthrough that we were able to get through almost any fight by using what we like to call the box combo, which was essentially an infinite combo that would end most any fights using This is pretty much just a better looking, better presented Xenoverse 1. Not only has the frame rate been increased to 60 on consoles, but additionally, the game sports better lighting and colors as well. What you get is an overall more crisp, more fluid looking game than before, and it's nice. Small things like the HUD and menu screens look nicer as well, which just gives the game a much cleaner feel than Xenoverse 1 had. There are still some presentation issues, like objects clipping through other objects, beams looking a bit too hollow, and characters' lips not matching what they're saying at least in English anyway, but none of these things bog the game down too heavily. It still looks very nice and as a result gets a pretty good score in this category. The sound effects between this game and Xenoverse 1 are pretty much the same, though the existing ones from Xenoverse 1 have been cleaned up a bit and there have been some new ones introduced that weren't in the first game. The improvements to the sound effects are very minor compared to the improvements to the soundtrack though. I know something like music is very subjective, but pretty much everybody I've talked to who's played the game agrees that the soundtrack in Xenoverse 2 blows the first games out of the water without a question. Additionally, the voice acting has been improved greatly. The voice acting in Japanese in the first game was fine, but in English I found it to be very lackluster to say the very least. While there are some areas it could be improved in in this game, I think the English voice acting in Xenoverse 2 is a lot better. Overall, Xenoverse 2 gets a pretty good score in sound as well. There's not a whole lot that I can say about the story mode without spoiling it, but suffice to say, it's very good. The story is told better, there are a lot of very unique and creative situations sprinkled throughout the story mode, and it's just a lot more fun to play through than Xenoverse 1 was. There are a lot more changes made to the Dragon Ball timeline, and I really appreciated all of them when I saw them. The only problem that I have with the story mode is that some cutscenes are recycled from Xenoverse 1, but that's not too much of a problem. And speaking of cutscenes, the cutscenes in the game are pretty nice looking. Looking, but there are some that are fully animated that look absolutely gorgeous. Overall, Xenoverse 2 gets a good score on the story as well. Xenoverse 2 improved in pretty much every way imaginable in this category. There are more characters to play as, there are more options for customizing your own character, there are a bajillion more costumes, super attacks, and ultimate attacks in the game. Each race now has their own race unique transformation. The amount of side quests in the game is almost intimidating as well. You can join Frieza's army, defend Guru's house from Frieza's invaders, give Majin food, food and help him start a family, help fight crime alongside the Great Saiya Man and Great Saiya Woman, become Mr. Satan's bodyguard, and train alongside Vegeta at Capsule Corporation. There are more mentors in the game, and you can train under all of them at once. There are a whole lot more parallel quests in this game than in Xenoverse 1, and this game also has the extreme parallel quests, which are super fun to play through. Planning ahead and strategizing with your friends to take down one super powerful enemy is seriously really fun. This game scores incredibly well in this category, as there's just so much to do, there's so much to customize your character with. I was freaking out the entire time I played this game. Xenoverse 2 is so much better than its predecessor in this category that it's hard to believe they're from the same series. The combat is faster and more fluid, there are more offensive and defensive options available to each player, hit detection has been improved, players can turn levels off when they play ranked matches online, Super Saiyan is no longer a spam fest, each of the transformations available to all of the races feel unique and are really fun to experiment with, there's no more super armor to deal with during parallel quests, each of the parallel quests are made much more genuinely and organically challenging. Markers have been added during parallel quests to direct players to where they need to go. Exploring Kanton City is much less of a chore than exploring Toki Toki City was. Mentors no longer spawn randomly. Drop rates have been increased for skills and equipment. Ultimate finishes are no longer RNG. Honestly, I can't think of a single aspect of the gameplay in Xenoverse 1 that wasn't improved in Xenoverse 2. The game is so much better that it's honestly hard to believe. It gets a massive thumbs up from me here. Seriously, the game is super fun to play.
by Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2.